Hello again, and welcome back to Professor Jim Caffey and my 10-minute astronomy lecture series. This is the final chapter, chapter 30, and it is on life in the universe. The study of life in the universe is called astrobiology, and NASA even has an astrobiology institute. Here is Comet Hayakatake. This was taken in 1996 when it went by in March at its closest approach of just over 9 million miles. Uh, I took an image just like this in front of a big telescope dome and also another picture that's far more colorful than this one um, that shows uh, Comet Hayakatake in more false color at a wide field of angle. cloud of gas and dust, we can find the earliest physical type of life on Earth in the preserved stromatolites. The abundance of chlorophyll, which helps with the synthesization of bacteria and algae, varies greatly over the ocean due to the availability of nitrogen. This is a very beautiful spring. Maybe you have seen it at Yellowstone National Park. We have seen um, more recently, um, I think in the 80s or 90s, uh, hydrothermal vents on the sea floor. Chemical vents, hot water, dark, and, stream, and where we find these, these vents in the ocean floor, even 15,000 feet down where the pressures would surely kill a human instantly, we find an abundance of life around this very um, you know, strange vent with such bad chemistry and hot temperatures, and uh, we find life. What we find is that with the Earth, wherever there is water, we find life. And that's why we are looking for water on Mars. This is in Spain with a pH close to 2. It is a river of acid. Um, that's about the pH value of um, pretty strong soda and other harsh chemicals. Here are some salt ponds near San Francisco. We can look at mudstone, and these were holes drilled by the NASA Curiosity Mars rover. We uh, think there could be some life forms uh, associated with some of Jupiter's large moons especially um, Europa, with the ice crust and saltwater ocean, definitely. And here that is again, Europa, as seen by the Galileo spacecraft in the um, Jupiter area. The same kind of spacecraft that saw Saturn was the NASA Cassini mission. And here we see jets of water coming out the South Pole um, of Enceladus, a moon of Saturn. We have actually landed on the moon Titan at Saturn. It is the thickest, biggest moon, and it is the only one with a thick atmosphere. We sent Voyager 1 out in the late 1970s, and Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 are still going strong. And one of them, Voyager 1, took a picture from 4 billion miles away with 1970s technology. Uh, and we see the Earth, or as Carl Sagan called it, our blue pale dot. On those Voyager spacecraft, we sent these gold records that contain 
basically um, human history, music and pictures and greetings to whoever may find them in hundreds of languages. The Drake Equation came up by Frank Drake, plaque here at the National Radio Astronomy Observatory, shows what the equation looked like when he pronounced it. In the time since, that equation has been expanded as we now know of other planets that could have life on them. The WISE spacecraft is a wide field infrared survey camera in space. Well, that's going to end my 30 chapter long video lecture series that I call 10 Minute Astronomy. I hope you will go back and look at these and see the rest. Thank you very much for joining me for this series. Well, did you enjoy that episode of 10 Minute Astronomy? If so, check out all the other videos in that playlist for 10 Minute Astronomy and other videos on my channel and then hit the subscribe button right there. Thanks.